Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Laurence and I post art videos once a week. Lately we've been revisiting some old concepts, some old themes, going back into abstract art and today's going to be a continuation of this trajectory we find ourselves on. So I don't know if you remember the this kind of abstract art that I was making before. Well, it kind of stayed at the stage of a concept. I've never done any final artwork with this type of art, but I did a video where I explained a lot more about this particular shape. It's something that I had in a dream. So I'll put the video right here so you can watch it if you want to. I've been looking at this and wanting to explore a bit more so I think that's what we're gonna do today. Let me just show you what I created in this style already. It's in my abstract sketchbook, which is right here. We have these two, these two, and this one. And this one, I try to explore with different mediums to have a bright white. And I have to say that I have not been successful so far. So now I'm gonna try something else. So what I want is have a base layer that would be a pale gray and then have a shape that looks like it with a part of it being a bright white. So what I did in the past is that I started with the base layer and then I added the rest on top. And maybe that's where I went wrong. Maybe I need to define the white shape first and then I can do the pale background and then I can work on the darkest shapes. Or what I could do is try to use my masking fluid to see how it would work on this type of paper. This is my Yupo paper pad. So this is synthetic paper. You can use it with watercolors and inks, but it reacts a lot differently than watercolor paper. It is way less absorbent. So you can really, you can have these types of like bubbles or you can make the paint merge when you move the paper like this. So I thought that it was very interesting. And today I had a flash. I thought, what if I put masking fluid on it in the shape of my white shape and then go ahead and put a layer, a base layer of some gray paint. So this is what I'm gonna try here. I already put the masking fluid. I'm waiting for it to dry. It's still not dry in the middle. So we're gonna wait. I also thought that I could try to mix a dark color that would not be black, just to see what we can get. So I have this primary cyan that I thought that I could mix with this burnt umber, just to see what kind of color we can get. We could also mix it with this burnt sienna to see the difference. And lastly, I have this red oxide that I think could be interesting. So while we wait for our masking fluid to dry, I thought we could have some fun with some mixes and then come back and do some more testing. I also had a flash for a specific shape. I thought we could do something like this. Here would be the white shape. This with the um, crisscross in it, it would be like a, a pale shape. It could be the darkest shape. Hmm. And then we would have the lines around. And in the white shape, we would have some gray lines coming out of it as well. So I thought it would be interesting. First of all, let's just try to do some mixes. I have my paper right here. I have my palette and some brushes. I have my favorite brushes at the moment, which is the Raphael k number no. 8. It's a synthetic brush. So let's just give this a good shake. You know what? I think I could swatch these colors in my swatching sketchbook so I can keep that information. The sketchbook I use for my swatching is the Stratmore Visual Journal. It's a watercolor sketchbook. It's 9 by 12 inches and it's very good quality. I think you can find better, but for swatching, it's great. So I always keep my swatches in a description so I know how to recreate them in the future. 
Let's use this page. First, we're just gonna put a drop of burnt umber. And I think we're gonna swatch it as is, just to have a good look at what it looks like undiluted. So this is pretty much the mass stone. But let's add some water so we can have a good swatch. It's very pretty. And then we're gonna put a drop of primary cyan right next to it and then we're gonna mix them. So I'm gonna put some primary cyan into my burnt sienna mix. This is pretty dark. Ooh, okay. So this blue is very, very strong. It's a very interesting color. Hmm. I think that this would be way more interesting than just a simple black because we can see some granulation. There's some areas that are very brown and others that are way more blue. So I'm going to add a bit more blue to it just to see what we get. So it, it looks like it's almost black, you know, but it has a more interesting dimension. And now with even more blue, ooh, ooh, this is nice. This might be a bit too blue, but it's, it's almost green. That's so nice. Wow. I don't know if we're gonna see that granulation on Yupo paper because it's very smooth, but it's good to know. Okay, so this was burnt umber. Now we're gonna do, let's do the primary cyan first and we'll do it with the Amsterdam burnt sienna. This is such a beautiful color. I love burnt sienna. I just don't know if it's gonna be appropriate for the mix we're trying to get. And then let's just do another touch of primary cyan. And then we're gonna mix a little bit of cyan in that burnt sienna. First mix is gonna be too brown, but we'll still swatch it because it can be very useful for future uses. I love mixing these types of color. You always get a good result. Okay, now we're gonna put more blue in it. Ooh, I think we're getting something that looks a bit like a dark green. Oh, this is so pretty. Wow, and then a touch more blue. This is a beautiful green. This is not what we're looking for for this specific project. I think, I might change my mind because it's so pretty. This is beautiful. We're gonna do our last mix here. Maybe we're gonna have to do it a bit smaller. So we'll mix primary cyan again. And I put A in front for Amsterdam because this is the brand. We're gonna mix it with Liquitex Red Oxide. Oh, this is beautiful. Wow. I'm sure we're gonna get a great mix. And then just gonna use what I have on my brush to create a first mix. I think this one is gonna air more towards a purple, which makes sense because that red oxide is a red. Ooh, but it's, it's very dark already. Hmm, interesting, let's add more blue. Oh, this is very pretty. I'm not sure this is something, this is what we're looking for. This is too blue, but it's very pretty. Nonetheless, I feel though like I should add a touch more red oxide. This is getting too blue for, for what we're looking for. I think that this primary cyan is a very strong color. Let's do another one here. Yeah, this is pretty. Okay, I'm trying a, a fourth mix with more red in there. 
and I added the blue very slowly because this blue takes over so easily. So now I want to try to keep that mix a bit warmer. Okay, so this is what we have. We're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna have a good look. As you know, I've been putting my extra colors in my sketchbook. I create these base layers just like this that I'm gonna use, well, as a base layer. So I'm gonna paint or draw something on top. And this is what I wanna do now because this is acrylic inks. I really need to hurry because otherwise they're just gonna dry and become unusable. So we're just gonna use them here quickly to do a, a little abstract. And then my paint will probably be dry. We're gonna have a good look at what we created. And I'm gonna use a bigger brush. I feel like using this one, which I don't use a lot. This is a Royal and Lang Nickel in the shape, I guess one inch. My camera died, but this is what I created. Um, so now I'm gonna rinse this plate off and we're gonna have a look at the colors that we mixed earlier. Okay, first we have the first mix that we created, which was Burnt Umber and Primary Cyan. And I have to say that if the goal was to replace the black, I think that this is where we have the best options. I feel like this first one is very interesting. It's very dark, but there's still some peaks of blue and brown. So I think that this would be a very good option. I think that it creates also some very nice grays, but I'm not sure that's what we're looking for. I think that if I were to use this color, I would just have to be careful because I don't want the color to be brown. So I would have to mix and test the color, which when I say it out loud, it makes sense, you know, <laughs> when you're doing art and you mix your colors, you want to test them first. Now, if we have a look at the mix with primary cyan and burnt sienna, I think that this is where we get the prettiest greens. Oh, wow. But this is not what we're looking for. But I'm glad that I know that I can mix these because this one, ooh, pretty. So, oh yeah, you, you didn't see it, but I added these two other mixes, just using what I had left in my plate and same thing with this one. And then the last mix was using primary cyan and red oxide. Here too, I think that we have interesting mixes, but they, they're they either very blue or they tend towards, they're a bit purplish, I think, which is not what I'm looking for. And I found this mix to be a bit harder to create maybe it's because i was using two different brands i'm not exactly sure so i think that we're gonna we're gonna do some tests using burnt umber and primary cyan okay so the masking fluid is now dry so i think i'm going to use my two colors that i previously selected which are the primary cyan and the burnt umber and i'm just going to do a light wash just on top of this area to see how it dries, how the ink behaves on the paper when I just do a wash. And then when everything is dry, then I'm gonna remove this and just see what happens really. Let's create a mix. So, Already I see that the ink does not stick to the paper like it would on a watercolor paper. You can see that there's like areas where it's just, it's kind of repelled by this paper. Whoop. I just went over another area. I think this is watercolor, so it reactivated. We're just gonna ignore this. I think we're just gonna let this dry and then see what happens. But so far I really like this color. It's a very pretty gray. I think this gray is more interesting than the gray we had before. But for sure, I think I'd be interested to try to paint this style 
on this Yupo paper and just see what happens because I have a pad, I have, I have a lot of paper. So if it's not pretty, who cares? You know what though, while we're at it, it's not dry, but I want to see what happens when I, I just lay the, the areas for the first shapes. Like if I want to add a darker shape around this white area, what happens? I think that the ink might be moving a bit too much. But what we could do is once the base layer is dry, I could wet just one area and then try to do this again and see how it spreads, but in that restrained area. But I like the shapes you can create. Now I'm just having some fun and seeing how the ink moves around and seeing what I can do and maybe add to my painting when I'm ready to do the real thing. It's so pretty. Oh my God. I love it. Oh my God, this is so nice. Okay, now I'm gonna let it dry, I promise. <laughs> this page is not fully dried, but I think it's like this corner here is dry enough for us to see if we can peel the masking fluid off because this would be the last step that we need to take before we start working on the Yupo paper on our final paintings. As you can see, I tested the other technique here where I just put an area of clear water and then I put some drop of ink to see how it spread and it contained itself to that area. So that was, that was interesting. Here I put a little piece of tape to see if I would be able to tape off the edges to create a clean edge, which was not the case that much. And I did not like it, but now I feel like I like this wiggly edge. So I think I might tape my edges finally in the end. And here I just put a big wash all over this area. And as you can see, the paint, it really was repelled by the paper. So that's interesting. This area here is not dry, but we're just going to try to peel the masking fluid. Oh, it works so well. Ooh, nice. So now we have this beautiful, clean, white area that we are left with. So I think that we can move on to a whole page now. Okay, we're back. So I prepped two boards because what I want to do is work on two paintings at a time. Since this paper takes a long, long time to dry, I figured I would have a bit more fun if I worked on two paintings. But I think that at some point, I'm just going to have to stop and wait a full day for that first layer to dry before I can work on the rest, or at least we'll see. I expect to have to wait a long time. But before we start, I just want to issue a reminder um, that today the name of the game is to have fun. So even if it turns super ugly, it's okay. I have all of this material to use it, to have some fun. And even if I don't like the final result, I'm sure I'll still have learned something. So that's good. So I took out this sketchbook. This is a sketchbook that I use mainly for sketches. One day when it's finished, I'll do a tour, but it's, it's nothing, it's not pretty. It's just something I use for planning. So I thought I could select one of these that I liked one that is attracting my eye a lot is this one. I don't know, I just like the general shape. So I think I could try this one and that one that I quickly sketched this morning. So I think that we'll start by putting our masking fluid where we don't want any paint to sit on. And then when it's dry, we're gonna do a base layer 
and then we'll see if we have time to do anything else. So let's start with this one, I think. I want that white shape to be in this corner here, center to top right corner. So I'm just going to draw the shape quickly. I want its center, I think, to be, not its center, I want its corner to be around here, and then it's gonna go down like this, and then go back up. Okay, so I'm gonna fill this shape now. So I'm putting quite a thick layer because I don't want to have any uh, staining of this area when I put the layer on top. Just want to clean up some edges. Let's switch to the other, the other canvas, the other page. This other white spot is going to be more in the bottom part. So more like here. Okay, so this is the general shape. And if you were wondering, yes, I totally ruined this brush the first time I used it. So now it's my masking fluid brush, which I do not recommend. Do not take your brushes, you're gonna ruin them. Now I have a small tool that I can use to, to spread my masking fluid. It's just that this area that I need to cover right now is much bigger than my tool. So this is why I decided to use this brush because it's already ruined. Okay, so I use my hairdryer to dry this masking fluid because it takes so long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the base layer for this one. And then tomorrow we're gonna be able to continue working on those. Okay, so what we'll do is that we are going to mix our colors for our base layer. I have a big flat brush that I love. And this one is by the brand Raphael as well. It's a soft aqua, one and a half inch, and I use it to make big washes. So yeah, I'm gonna use it. I just need to remember to clean it well after. Okay, so let's create our mix. I'm gonna put a little bit of Primary cyan here, along with some burnt umber. We're gonna mix, mix, mix. I feel like this is gonna be a tiny bit too blue. So I'm adding more, more burnt umber. Let's test it. I think this is good. So we're just gonna put a large wash all over. It's already super interesting. And we'll just see how it spreads. There's no way I think of avoiding these lines. Hopefully they're gonna spread a little bit more and create some different shapes, textures, effects. I think it's just the nature of this paper with a, a wet media. That's just what happens, I think. I decided to add another layer just to darken things up a bit. Oh, this is so nice. But it needs to stay pale, so I have to I have to restrain myself a little bit. This might be too much. Everything spread quite beautifully before, so I'm hopeful that it's gonna do the same. And we'll do the same thing with this one. I think now I'm gonna wait and just see how it dries. We're probably gonna have to wait until tomorrow and then we'll continue working. 
Oh my God, look at this. So yesterday I removed the tape pretty early when I realized that the background was dry because I don't plan on doing anything else that reaches the sides of this paper. I haven't used this paper a lot before, so I don't know how it's reacting with tape. So I didn't want to take any chances, so I removed the tape. But then this part here wasn't fully dried and I realized that since my table and my floor, nothing is really leveled. So the paint just pulled wherever it went. So I could control it a little bit so I could like make it go a little bit more this way if I added something under the board or not, or like wherever I placed it on the floor, it had a different inclination. So it would make that paint pool. And here, this, uh, this other one I left on the table and I love how it pulled. It's so nice. Also look at all these little like speckles and stuff like that. It's super, super interesting. I still have that masking fluid on top because now what I want to do is work on the rest of these images and then I'll remove this at the end. I kind of want to do that with all of my papers now. Anyway, I've just discovered something. Okay, before we move on to working on the pieces I just showed you, I just want to do a couple more tests. So. I want to try to recreate something like this because I don't remember what I used to create these lines. So I want to just take a little space here and try to create these lines. I also want to drop some drops of water and see if I can get the ink to spread in a beautiful way. Ideally, I would use some acrylic inks to create this because I want to stay, I want to use light fast products. And also I want to try to add some white. So I have two types of acrylic inks. I have the Liquitex one and I have the Amsterdam one. They're supposed to be opaque, but I want to see how opaque they are if I try to do some lines over top of stuff that I have already on this paper. Are they going to show? And also I have this uh, golden high flow acrylic in titanium white. So I want to see if one's better than the other. So that's what we're going to try. And then I think after that, we'll be ready to start working on our paintings. So I'm going to put a little bit of Amsterdam titanium white in this little container. So let's try to put some white here. Okay, so it's pretty opaque. And if I dilute it a bit with water, if I want to have it a bit more flowy, I can create these kind of like glazing effects. Let me just try the Liquitex one. The thing that I usually dislike about the Amsterdam white is that it's very streaky compared to the Liquitex one. But I think that in our case today, we can use these streaks to create an extra bit of texture. Yeah, I feel like the Liquitex one just spreads better. Let's just try the Titanium White in Golden High Flow. Okay, so Golden High Flow at Maston is pretty great. Oh, I like it. I think it's my favorite, in fact. Now we're gonna try the other types of lines. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of my two inks, so my Burnt Umber and my Primary Cyan. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so I'm going to keep it tilted like this. And what I want to do is create some lines. Oh, that's nice. And let's see if I add some drops of water. I need some small drops. So I think I'm going to take a small brush and place some drops on my paper. So I placed a couple of drops and let's just see. I 
think that we can create something interesting. Okay, so I think we're done with our tests. Let's see what we can do with these big paintings now. Okay, so first what I want to do is I want to paint a light shape. Then I'm going to add some lines. So this painting inspires me some lines that would go like this and then a little bit of white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Raphael brush in number four and I'm just going to go pretty light and create the shape that I want. This would be fine. So this is going to act as my guide as well. I have quite a lot of time to work on this because the paint does not absorb in the paper. It dries very slowly. And that's also what creates these all of these beautiful shapes. Okay, so I think this is going to be the first shape. And now we're going to do the same thing with the second one. So this one is interesting because it doesn't have a dark shape around the white dot. So we're going to have to create one. I think that for this one, I can start to work on the white area. I want it to be facing this way. So I think I'm just going to put a light wash with my golden high flow acrylic. Some white that would go like this. And we'll see what happens because it's my first time drying this. So we'll just let it dry and have a look later. Okay, so now I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to put a thin diluted line of blue and just see what happens. Okay, it's been about, what, half an hour? And it's starting to dry. It created some interesting shapes. I'm not exactly sure what I think about them, but I think it's all gonna come together when we add the lines and everything, so. Put this one aside and we're going to start working on the lines for this one, which is very exciting. Ooh. We're going to try to do it like this and I'm going to use this little brush. This is also a Raphael number four precision brush to do some dots here and there. And we'll start our lines. Okay, I'm done with the lines. That was so much fun. Oh my God. The only thing that I struggled a little bit with is that since this is acrylic ink, 
it dries and it looks like I still have some here, but it's pretty much all dried. So I tried to work fast so it wouldn't all dry up on me because I didn't want to have to mix another color and run the risk that one area of my lines would be a different color than the rest. Yeah, so, so far this is what we have. This is so pretty. And I think I'm just going to add like a little bit of white here when this is dry. So we're going to put it aside and we're going to have to create another mix for the other, uh, that other painting. Yeah, this is going to be our shape. Okay, listen, I don't think I want to add the white here. I think it's very pretty just as it is. And I'm not sure about this white that I put here. I feel like it's too cool for the rest of the image. So I don't want to run the chance to mess this up. So I think that what I want to do is just remove the masking fluid now and see what we get. Oh, sorry, but have you seen this? <laughs> it's so nice. Wow, it's so moody. And like, it makes me feel stuff. Oh, I love it. Honestly, I think this one is finished. So I'm gonna put it back on, on here, move it aside. I'm gonna try to add some paint here. So I mixed a little bit of my mix with the, the white that I had before in the hopes of giving it a better undertone. I'm painting a bit more opaque so the paint doesn't move around as much. So I'm just gonna leave this to dry. I'm interested to see how it's gonna go. And um, and yeah, we'll see. Okay, so this is a few days later. So I have these two paintings. They're so moody. I love, 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 love them so much. In the end, I only put some kind of white-ish area on this one i feel like this one was complete as it was and this one was kind of a test to see what would happen with a white area and at first i didn't really like it but then i put another layer on top that was a little bit well i changed the color a little bit and i think i like it much better 
So I think I just explored with different, different styles, different things that I could do. And I love them so much. So I'm just going to clean up this little edge right here, just slightly. I don't mind that we can see a little bit of spill, like that this line is not the cleanest. I think it fits well with the style of these images, but it's just like in the corner, sometimes there's lines like this. So these I'm going to make disappear. I'm so glad we can do that and it doesn't damage the paper whatsoever. So that's it my friends. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed this different type of art. And don't forget to leave me any comments or suggestions below. Subscribe and like if you're still here. And I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.